This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening everyone and welcome to Southern Cross News. There's been a major blow for the federal government's proposed changes to the GST, with states and territories rejecting the plan at a meeting in Melbourne today. The Tasmanian government is now at loggerheads with Canberra and says it won't agree to the changes unless a guarantee is explicitly included in new laws that no state will be worse off. Well, Tasmanian Treasurer Peter Gutwin has just arrived back in the state and joins us now live. Good evening, Treasurer. Previously, Joe, good you've, evening. Previously, you've said this is a good deal for Tasmania. Can you tell me what's changed? Well, Joe, what we've said previously is that on face value, the Commonwealth's model, modelling um, predicts that we'd receive $112 million more over the period that they've modelled. Um, however, what we've asked for is a guarantee, a, a no worse off guarantee, uh, with making a significant shift from the existing system to a new system. Uh, and whilst the modelling shows that uh, we could be better off, what we want is a guarantee uh, that we will not receive anything less than we would under the current system. As you've said, the Commonwealth modelling has suggested this deal would give us an extra $112 million. You obviously don't trust that modelling and perhaps the long term security of our GST share? Well, in terms of economic modelling, um, you know, things can change. Uh, look, if anybody out there can tell me what the economic circumstances are going to be in 10 years, I'll give them a job in Treasury today. Um, look, the simple fact is that uh, the Commonwealth's modelling um, demonstrates that over the period they've modelled that we could be $112 million better off, uh, but we want a guarantee that we will be no worse off. And that's a, uh, a sentiment that's been shared uh, and agreed to by all of the state and territory treasurers. You're saying you want a, a better deal and you want that guarantee, but haven't we been called the beggar state in the past? I mean, is that the sort of attitude you're up against with the federal government? Well, in terms of um, all of the states and territories, all of the treasurers are of a single mind on this. Um, and from Tasmania's point of view, we have said that we would not agree to anything that wasn't in the state's best interests. And it's not in the state's best interests to agree to this deal without a no worse off guarantee. And as I've said, that's a position that's strongly shared by every other state and territory treasurer. Well, thank you very much for your time this evening. Joe, thank you. There's confirmation controversial poison 1080 is being deployed in the Central Highlands. Animal rights activists and the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party say animals suffer an horrific and painful death and it needs to be banned. But a prominent wildlife biologist says there's misunderstanding about the issue. And a warning, some viewers may find this story distressing. This controversial poison is said to be deployed in coming days at a property in Tasmania's central highlands. It's not right, the risks are too great and if there's a risk to endangered species out there, why would you do it? De Pipwi says it inspected the property and found an unacceptable risk of browsing animals and that the owners had no other viable or effective choice left but to use it. While there are strict protocols around its use, those opposed say there's other options. It's unnecessary, particularly when you've got qualified and enthusiastic volunteers of ground hunters and shooters who can do the job. Despite 1080 being legal, fresh concerns today raised about its impact on native and endangered species. It's a long, prolonged death with seizures, vomiting, diarrhoea, bleeding, hemorrhaging. It's a nasty way for any animal to die. Like anything, if you consume poisons, that poison is going to go through the ecosystem. But these claims are questioned by this wildlife biologist who says while it is highly toxic to cats and dogs, there's historical ignorance surrounding the issue. It's in some Australian plants. So most native wildlife has a resistance. Tasmanian devils are very resistant to 1080. De Pipwi allowed 1080 to be used at 40 properties last financial year, but maintains it's only ever as a last resort and will be used until viable, safe and cost-effective alternatives become available. It's a lazy, bureaucratic way of dealing with pest animals in an inhumane manner and it needs to be stopped now. If you do have moral concerns for animals, you should be concerned about the use of 1080. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. 
Police say they're extremely disappointed after $25,000 worth of firefighting equipment was stolen overnight. The goods, including a petrol generator, radios, hoses and pump, were being used at a fuel reduction burn near Nunamara. Police say the remote site is only accessible by four-wheel drive or motorbike. They're appealing for anyone with information to contact Crime Stoppers. Metro's proposed Derwent River ferry service could be contracted out to a third party. The government-owned business is conducting forums as it decides on a plan going forward. One issue being considered is if Metro could offload operations to another business. Certainly as we've acknowledged we're at quite an early stage of our planning process and we're not at a point yet where we've determined how the service will be delivered. Uh, sub contracting is one of the possibilities. We're certainly not in a point to confirm that today. There's still no timeline on the setup of the initial service, which is planned to run between Bell Reeve and Hobart. Australia's Hotel and Motel Association is calling for a fairer playing field when it comes to short-stay rentals. It wants to see the same rules apply around disability access and safety. It's one of the most divisive issues facing the industry how to juggle hotels and motels against the explosion of short-stay sites like Airbnb. Today, those from traditional accommodation told an upper house inquiry it wants short-stay sites to face the same rules around disability access and safety. They're really important. We comply with those things, so we're looking for some sort of level playing field and also that those buildings that are being used for uh, home sharing are registered and that they're uh, not ducking out of their obligations. Kemuel Wood only recently became an Airbnb host in St Helens. He says there's not enough family accommodation over the busy summer season. We, in our peak tourist seasons, we do not have the accommodation in town to deal with the tourists that come to town. So short-term accommodation fills in that gap. But there's concern the good times won't last forever. We've been through tough times here in Tasmania as well. In fact, uh, you know, we've... We, uh, five years ago, the winter here was 48.5% occupancy. We're talking more like 80% occupancy now. The Caterers Association also fronted the inquiry today via video link. In its submission, it opposed any more regulation that placed more burden on the short-stay industry. The inquiry will meet in Burnie tomorrow. Sean McComish, Southern Cross News. A new bus service on Mount Wellington aims to fix access issues and congestion at the popular tourist spot. The regular scheduled route will take visitors to the top of the mountain even when the road is closed to the public because of snow. Rolling into town, these are the new buses set to be a game changer for Mount Wellington. Regular scheduled services from Hobart's waterfront to the top of the mountain. The tour will take two hours to complete from the city back to the city again with a 20 minute stopover on the pinnacle and we also have a one way ticket. Those one-way trips could be used for mountain bikers and walkers on the uphill leg, dropping them at the top of trails. It's an addition and an ability to get more visitors, more locals up on the mountain, cars off the road, and the real attraction for us is to activate those existing expensive assets, the walking tracks, the bicycle tracks that are already on the mountain. The biggest change will come in winter, when snow blocks public access to the summit. Under a five-year council deal, the service will be allowed to go to the top after the road is ploughed. It will be fitted with snow tyres and we'll be using chains if required and uh, all of our drivers highly trained and uh, uh, they're all trained in uh, hazardous driving. Despite this new transport service, the state government is still backing a cable car to provide better access to the mountain. In relation to Hobart City Council, of course, they can provide uh, services, uh, whether it's in the interim or, or long term, uh, but uh, I would urge people to get behind the cable car. The bus service begins at the end of the month. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. A forum confronting the alarming issue of male suicide in Tasmania has begun in Campbelltown. The two-day workshop allows those working on the front line to have their say as part of a national trial. For former police officer Mark Davis, choosing to share his story of overcoming suicide is simple. I really do not wish other people to go down the same track as me and if they can glean anything from my experience that helps them, makes them take shortcuts, lets them have a better perspective, then 
I'll be really pleased. Speaking today at a statewide forum addressing the issue, Mr Davis encouraged others not to become a statistic. Once I got over the very strong reluctance to seek help, I did so, and from then on things started to improve. As part of the Australian Government's National Suicide Prevention Trial, 85 social workers, counsellors and community members shared their views on reducing the alarming figures. Three out of four suicides in Tasmania are men and there's some different things we could be doing to make our approaches more male friendly. Glen Poole tours the country, leading workshops, trying to get to the crux of the crisis. One of the key things is that we tend to approach suicide as a mental health issue, but what we know is that most male suicides are not linked to mental health issues, they're linked to social issues like relationship breakdown, like trouble at work, uh, money issues. Last year, 60 men and 20 women committed suicide in Tasmania, but the general consensus today was through more training, education and tailored support, lives will be saved. Bringing it to the front of mind and actually helping us to think differently about what the issues are. The Primary Health Tasmania Forum will continue in Campbelltown tomorrow. And if you or someone you know needs help, you can contact Lifeline. Jesse Gilmore, Southern Cross News. The Royal Hobart Hospital is set to gain some more life-saving equipment for our youngest patients. Thanks to the generosity of those who donated to the Give Me Five for Kids appeal. Hobart radio station Triple M today handing over a $500,000 cheque to the Royal Hobart Hospital. The Embroiderers Guild of Tasmania has today celebrated a centuries-old craft, its members spending two years carefully stitching hundreds of intricate pieces to feature in the Golden Anniversary Exhibition. Golden threads to mark a golden moment. I am absolutely uh, over, overwhelmed at, at uh, how beautifully it's set out. It's a different type of embroidery because you're using a, a metallic thread and it's very hard to use. It's stitch by stitch, yes. And from intricately stitched book covers to work dating back to the 1960s, the display represents thousands of hours of dedication. The Embroiderers Guild of Tasmania has 87 members who meet weekly, but what they've created is far more than just the threads they stitch. If anybody's got a problem, um, they quietly talk about it and somehow it becomes sorted out. From spinning yarns to learning of the young girls who spent their lives making lace. They worked in factories with matrons over them with rulers and they often made the same piece of lace, the same length, uh, for their whole life. The growing group has even worked with Jenny Aidan Christie from London, a woman who helped make the lace on Kate Middleton's wedding dress. It took her seven weeks and 24 hours a day. They had a roster of 70 people. It was all very secret and an amazing result. The exhibition will be on display at the Punchbowl Christian Centre in Launceston until Saturday. Jessie Gilmore, Southern Cross News. A sporting event with a point of difference is making its way to the state, with Hobart set to be one of 200 communities throughout Australia and the USA taking part in the ping pong -thon. On October 19, players will compete for 24 hours straight in Hobart's Elizabeth Street Mall, raising money to help stamp out sexual exploitation and human trafficking. Today there's more slaves in the world than there's ever been in history. There's over 45 million people caught in slavery at the moment. Um, and so, yeah, it's something that really good opportunity to do something about it. The event has raised more than $1 million since 2011. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news. Thanks to Tasplan, your local super fund, higher commodity prices have boosted local material and energy stocks and pushed the Australian share market to close higher. The ASX 200 index has risen by 19.9 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 71.79 US cents and 81.73 Japanese yen. Competition has heated up at the halfway point of the Australian Junior Motocross Championships in Penguin. Tasmanian Jet Burgess Stevenson was among the best in the Mini Lights category, finishing today's heat in third place. 
Fellow Tasmanian Jacob Brewer proved the standout in the 65cc under nine class, taking out the first final with Angus Pearce and Lockie Smith crossing the line in second and fifth in their respective categories. While many consider it one of the more frustrating games going around, Tasmanians are being urged to pick up the sticks with Golf Tasmania launching its annual golf month in Launceston today. The message this year is you know, share the game you love with the people you love. So the people who are playing golf now are our best ambassadors for golf, encouraging their friends and families and work colleagues to come into the game. Girls encouraging girls to get out there and you know drag each other along to the golf course and have a bit of fun and giggle out on the golf course would be the best way to do it. Around 50 clubs across the state will host a range of events throughout October in a bid to drive participation. Two Tasmanians are pushing their bodies to the limits as they prepare to represent Australia at the World Weightlifting Championships. But Sean Fitzgerald and Katie Fasina know they'll need to be at the very top of their game against the best competition on the planet. Fasina is no stranger to the big stage, having claimed silver at April's Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast. It's amazing, but also terrifying, just being there and definitely being like a four-year build, um, build up and everything that's happened leading up to that as well. And my biggest feeling was relief because it was just like I made it and everything was just worth it there and then. And after seeing his training partner raise the bar, Fitzgerald is now keen to carve out his own lifting legacy. Uh, you got to embrace the pain a little bit. <laughs> just enjoy the, the lows more than you enjoy the highs, I guess. As the only two Tasmanians securing a spot in the Australian squad, the pair journey to Turkmenistan at the end of this month for weightlifting's World Championships. Yeah. And while Fasina heads in as one to beat, Fitzgerald is embracing the unknown of competing in his first international event. The day I worked out I could do it as a sport and compete, I pretty much got addicted, came to the weightlifting academy and now it's been three years off to the World Championships. And with the Com Games ticked off, the young mother has one more big goal in mind before calling it quits in the sport, the Olympic Games in Tokyo in 2020. I'm becoming a really strong role model for my son. As he's getting older now, he's nearly three and he's starting to come to the gym with me and learning a few snatches and clean and jerk. So I'm definitely the biggest part I think I'm getting out of this is I'm cementing some good values for my son as well as a person. Good evening at Eastern Point recorded our top today with 23 degrees, Hobart 17, Launceston and Devonport reached 21 and Burnie 18. And after a very dry September, not much rain with the system that crossed today, Mount Reed registered 13 millimetres overnight and all readings today under 3 millimetres. St Helens 22 degrees, Friendly Beaches 19, Flinders Island, Low Head and Ooze 17, Smithton 16, King Island Grove and Strawn 15 degrees. Now some shallow low clouds streamed over the west and south of the state today, some thicker cloud did gather over and off the northeast with that trough, with most of that cloud now entering the Tasman Sea, lower level cloud over the Bight and Southern Ocean, that's heading our way, and the trough's also responsible for the cloud over the southern mainland. Tomorrow the high over the Bight pushes a ridge over Tasmania as well as Central Australia. A weak cold front passes to our south and the big trough's still there over the mainland. The winds southwest to south easterly at 10 to 20 knots, more easterly over the north at 25 knots before tending light and variable in the afternoon. Now the forecast for tomorrow, cloudy in Hobart, 15 the top, 14 the high for Signet, bit of cloud over Norfolk and 16 degrees. Launceston, partly cloudy, fine, 17 the high, 15 for Devonport and Campbelltown. A late shower may be moving over Campbelltown. Cloudy for Burnie and 14, cloudy also for Strawn. An early shower for Smithton, a top of 15 degrees. And in the east we have a frost warning for parts of the Midlands and the east coast. St Helens partly cloudy and 15, 15 for Swansea. Early frost for Fingal becoming cloudy and 16 degrees. On Friday mainly fine after patchy frost again, the chance of a light shower over the east. Areas of morning fog on Saturday follow by a fine day with light winds and the first day of daylight saving time will be mainly fine although a little cloudy sunset at 7:24 p.m with last light at eight minutes to eight a possible storm in perth tomorrow partly cloudy in adelaide and melbourne rain for sydney with possible heavy falls more would be appreciated further west i'm sure and a partly cloudy day and 27 for brisbane a little bit cloudy at the moment, 11 degrees in Hobart, 14 degrees in Launceston, Devonport currently 15 degrees. Daylight saving on our doorstep, Joe, I'm well prepared. I've got the spray, the lacquer for the curtains, they're not going to fade on me this year. Well, good luck with that. Gosh, your wife's lucky. Thank you very much for that, Murph. That's all from the team. We'll see you a bit later. Bye-bye. <laughs>